<laughs> Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. Hi, I'm Jessica Fast. We have got a full docket of videos to do today, but because we want to procrastinate that, we're going to start <laughs> with our recent reads. Mine's heavy. Oh, you got a big one. Yeah, I got a picture book. I realized in the past few, I stopped doing picture books, which I don't, I don't know why yeah. I would do such a thing. That was really awful of me. Um, but I've been reading a lot of picture books, so I can just start with that one since I've awesome. monopolized the opening of this video. Um, I read The Little Wooden Robot and The Log Princess That's by Tom so Dahl. Okay, so I actually was talking with an editor at this publisher, and she was saying that this book, it was a perfect example of her list because it's got that classic feel, but it's also super current and fun and exciting. And I agree. So it's about, um, the art is just incredible, first of all. It's very storybook, oh, which is not yeah. usually my vibe, but with the graphic novel kind of take on it. Yeah. But it's just about a king and queen who want kids, and they go to the witch and the inventor, and they make a little robot and a log princess. And then the two of them sort of get swept up on this dangerous adventure. And it's about the community that helps them find their way back home. It's super sweet, but there's a lot of humor in there. It's the the illustrate. It's a perfect example of what I'm looking for now. So I like to thank that editor. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a super fun read. That it is a timeless like keep on your shelf forever, passed down from kid to kid. Kind right. of picture book. Love it, love it. Um, my did not read any picture books. Uh, it's a shame. Um, you should. My books are all I guess lend themselves to upmarket. Good description of upmarket. Maybe some literary and all this. Um, the first one uh, I'm going to talk about. I haven't seen this everywhere. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. I went to this little bookstore on my vacation in um, Winter Park, Colorado. Shout out. And I wish I'd remembered the name of the bookstore because I would shout out to them. But it was this really adorable. I mean, who doesn't love an independent bookstore? And I walked in and I told them this is the last book I read. And it was Chemistry Lessons, which I've talked about in a previous video. And I loved it. And she immediately pulled a couple things off the shelf. And of course, I bought Perks them all. of a small bookstore, people. I know. I bought them all. So this one, A Woman of Light, um, Callie Fajardo Anstein. I'm sorry I butchered the author's name. Um, so this is actually not my usual fare. Uh, I would actually say this is more an Amanda book. But it's a... Um, it's a family saga. Uh, I'm going to sort of read the thing. It's five generations of an indigenous Chicano family in the American West. So it is mostly historical. It has some magical realism in it. Um, and it was really beautifully done. I know why this is everywhere. And this cover is amazing. And let's face it, covers matter. And I think this one is super striking. And yeah, every I really time I see it scrolling, I stop that cover is something else. Yeah, I really enjoyed this, but I would say if you're writing sort of an epic family saga, historical kind of book like this, definitely uh, head over to Amanda because she's the one at Bookends who I think would love this book. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going to go up in the age range. So I read book two in the Lightfall series by Tim Probert. Um, this is my, I will just bash it against my face. It is my favorite graphic novel series. It is so good. So this is the I second one. It, I should it down. Writing it down. Yeah. Writing it down. Oh yeah, you should. It's a good, uh, it's a good it holiday down. gift. Um, well, I should have brought the first book down with me, but it's about this girl whose grandfather goes missing and she goes on a hunt to find him and she comes across a Galdorian, which is a, supposedly a species that's no longer living, but there he is right there on the mm -hmm. cover. Um, and they that. go on a hunt to find her grandfather and they uncover a huge plot to steal their world's light source. Um, it, the, I, I honestly am not going to say anything else because this is book two, but the art is just incredible. And I think the art in this book is even better than the art in book one. Like it really leveled up. There were some incredible full page, full spreads. Like I read it. That's all I have to say. It's super quick. It's a graphic novel. You'll get through it quick. The third one doesn't come out until next year, so we all have to suffer and wait. Um, but hands down, one of my favorite series ever. 
Well, I am doing my shopping for the holidays. And yeah, I, I started to. Right from the studio. Yeah. And I'm buying both of those. No, I, it's really good. It is the perfect gift too. Book one and book two, put them together and. Uh, I'm doing it. There you I'm go. I'm doing it. So um, on my venture to the Winter Park Bookstore, and I can't believe it. I know I saved, oh, I did save their bookmark. Shout out to Mountain Shire Books and Gifts. Thank you for the recommendations. Um, they also recommended When Women Were Dragons, and this is all mood for me. I just inhaled this. I mean, just the idea of it I love so much. So I have to read this um, from the book's description. Um, when Women Were Dragons exposes a world that wants to keep women small, their lives and their prospects, and examines what happens when they rise in mass and take up the space they deserve. And I want all of those books, all of those books. Um, so in this book, this has also um, got some fantasy in it. I really have been leaning more into fantasy. Yeah. Um, in everything I'm doing, not just my reading, but in the books I've been offering rep on. So in this book, basically, the women get pissed and they turn into dragons. Cool. And I think it's set in like the 1950s. And there's a historic day when all of the women rise up and thousands become dragons. And typically the children are fine, but the husbands don't always survive. The men don't always survive, but the women become dragons. And then every once in a while, you will see like the shadow of a dragon overhead. Like they're always oh, cool. kind of checking in. Um, so they don't actually, actually, they kind of do play a part. But anyways, I can't tell you because I'll just give it all away. But it, it sort of tells the story of one girl. It focuses on one girl who um, who lives in a not great situation. Her mother was very sick with cancer. Her father's a jerk. And um, she's also very close to her aunt. But it's sort of her story of um, <clears throat> her relationship to the women who become dragons and her relationship to sort of, well, just her growing up and coming of age as a woman in the world. Um, yeah, that's really inventive. Yeah, it's a, such a great idea. Kenny, Kelly Barnhill is the author and I do not believe, uh, oh, she did middle grade too, which is interesting before oh. this, um, but this is definitely adult. I love this. And this is, I mean, really give me all of the books like this. I just loved it. Yeah, that sounds really good. Um, I, all right, I'm late to this party, but I read Finley Donovan is Killing It by- I Alex. haven't read it yet, so- Yeah, I'm gonna it. put I'm this later. in, in my, um, my pile for when I come back to the office, whenever I come back to the office. Um, but everybody's been talking about this whole series. This has come out, I think, two years now, but everybody's been talking about the whole series. One of my clients read it, loved it, and has been yelling at me to read it ever since. Um, <laughs> but it's super fun. So it's basically a writer goes to meet her agent at- dinner she's late on her story and on her novel and she's basically saying I've got to find a new way to kill someone in a creative way and this woman overhears her and thinks that she's a hit woman so she slides her a note and says here's like I'll give you 50,000 this is his name and she's like I can't possibly do it but then she's like I kind of have to look into this it's 50,000 oh my god I love how have I not read this I don't know it's super fun she's late on her bills she's like 50 grand is 50 grand folks um it's super funny Finley uh, Donovan is, is a hysterical narrator. Um, it is a really good mystery. It's light bear. It was, it's kind of of the vibe of like the Thursday Murder Club, The Maid, mm -hmm. um, A Bad Day for Sunshine, those lighter fair mysteries. I really enjoyed it. I would pick up the next one. I probably won't for like another three years because that's <laughs> how it took me to get to this one. <laughs> but I definitely recommend it. Um, it's especially if you're writing mystery. I think it's just a fun way to see the different tone that you can take right it doesn't always have to go super dark yeah I think that's super important in mystery because I do feel like sometimes authors writing mystery slide into get themselves into a very narrow box of what it means yeah. to write a mystery um and the market is also, trending a bit lighter now too like there's a lot of series yeah. coming out that are super light and funny and not quite what the market has been for a while which is super dark and harrowing and spooky and 
Yeah, there seems to be in the mystery world these days more of a, uh, well, I think the maid is a real example of this sort of yeah. almost a cross between cozy mysteries and um, regular mystery or suspense, like they, not even across, yeah, I guess they seem to be merging a bit and sort of creating a new, which is so nice because there was always in that world such a divide between them. Yeah, we talked like, about this recently, like it's really, cozy mystery is expanding a lot into what yeah. that term means, which it is fun. I, I think this takes the tone of cozy, but not quite the content. Whereas yeah. I feel like the maid was very much just a hardcover kind of cozy. Like yeah, but I that. felt like I felt like the maid had a second layer to yeah. the plot that cozies don't always have. Yeah, for sure. But this one, I think <laughs> if you sent this to a cozy editor, they would not have it. But it has that kind of tone, which I like to see that cozy, because the cozy tone is fun. That yeah. small vibe, all the same characters, small town vibe, all the same characters. It, well, is, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, that's the whole thing with cozies. They're fun. Yeah. And and now I like seeing more fun and mysteries just across the board. They should be fun. I mean, but I think for a lot of authors, it's hard to write death and murder and make it fun. Which I get. I get that. <laughs> Okay, so my next book is These Impossible Things by Salma L. Ward Wardani. Anybody you have a cover you? vibe too. Like you have. I do, I do. A love lot of the covers that you read have that kind of, yeah, color blocking. Yeah, you're right. I have all the color blocking covers. Yeah, like I remember you read Detransition Baby. You read a, a lot of books with those kinds of covers. Yeah, I do go for the color blocking. And I'm not going to lie, a couple covers for my clients that have ended in my inbox lately all have this sure. <laughs> um, This is set, this is set in the United States and is the story of, and I'm sorry, I sort of have to read as I go because my memory is a sieve when it comes to reading books because besides this and submissions and everything else, it all melds together. But anyway, it's three best friends who are all Muslim. And it's, it is a bit of a coming of age. They became friends more or less in college. They're friends in college. And at the beginning of the book, they're just sort of graduating, but it's not a new adult kind of book. Um, and it talks about, see, this sounds a little preachy, but it's the story of these women coming, trying to accept being modern women but also holding strong to their Muslim beliefs. And I think each woman has a different version of how they can best do that. Um, and of course, none of their versions work out exactly because none of them get them exactly right. And there's a falling out in the friendships and hopefully a coming together. And I just love these kind of friendship stories and it, it really involves their families as well. And um, I love family stories. I love friendship stories. I think friends are family. So this is that kind of story where their friendships are family and how um, much they rely on each other and take care of each other. But this is a really great book. This was um, a read with Jenna book. Um, but I really recommend this for anybody who's looking. And I would say, you know, this falls into sort of the upmarket women's fiction area. Um, but I definitely think it's more upmarket. Yeah, we were just talking, before, I think before we even hit record, that Read with Jenna seems to lean a lot more upmarket, but we both Definitely. tend to like her, her choices, too. I do like her choices a lot, yeah. All right, my last one. I will not ever in my life shut up about this book. I, I read I know, Babel. we've heard. <laughs> I won't shut up. Babel by R.F. Kwong. This has become a top five book for me. I, my, the, like, the binding of the book is just completely shattered. Um... I, it was, it was really incredible. I did not have, I think the proper expectations going in. I thought it was going to be like very fantasy because RF Kuang is the author of the Poppy War, which was a series that I know was huge recently in fantasy, but I went into it thinking it was going to have a ton of like fantastical elements. All right. It, it did not. It was very historical. So it was set in the early 1800s in Britain. Um, it was about a Chinese boy who was taken from a his home, his, his family dies, and a professor comes, an Oxford professor comes and takes him to, um, to England and then enrolls him in Oxford. And in Oxford, they instill magic into silver bars that basically run and power the world by using language and translation. And 
then the main character, Robin, gets approached by a secret society who is stealing the silver and trying to take down Oxford. And it is a, a secret society made up of mostly people of color who have been colonized by England. And he gets torn between Oxford, which is everything he's you know been raised in and right. his, his homeland and his culture. And the, the, I, multiple times I had to put the book down because I was like, what just happened? Writing it down. You did not do that to me, did you? <laughs> it was so well written. It was long. I thought that it would take me forever. But once I got like 100 pages in and my expectations of what the book was like kind of clicked, it was it was done. It was over. I will not stop talking about this. I've been dying to get Amanda to read it. Amanda says that it's on her list. But when you have a library list, with the library system where you're 150, that doesn't work for me. I need someone to read <laughs> quick and talk to me about this book. Seriously, it is it is really one of I think my favorite books I've ever read. So wow. Go by Babel by RF Kwong. I'm I just put it on my list. I'm heading to the bookstore apparently after we're done doing videos. I love this book. I would be curious if you would like this book. Because I know you're not usually a big historical reader, but I, would I used like, to be. Yeah, you did I used to be. That's true. Yeah. But it yeah. was it was so good. It was so good. I haven't read anything. I finished this last week and I haven't read anything. I haven't even picked up another book. I needed some time, you know? Mm -hmm, I do know. I get it. I get it. Well, I feel bad for Sarah Addison Allen going after that one. <laughs> well, you <laughs> love Sarah Addison Allen, so just like give it all you got. <laughs> yes. So there are very few authors in this world who I have read their entire library of works. Sarah Addison say, Allen. That is one. true. It drives me nuts. <laughs> it I, drives me nuts sometimes because you will love a book and then you're like, I don't need to pick up the next one. I'm like, what do you mean? I already loved that author. I don't need to read more. Yeah. They're already in my heart. That's enough. <laughs> but Sarah Addison Allen is honestly, anybody who's written more than two books, she's probably the only author who I've read all of. Yeah, probably. But, you know, unless they've only written one or two books. <laughs> um, and, and she's inspired a lot of what I love about my own list, which is my love for um, the sort of fabulism, that hint of magic, that world that we live in today that has magic that not all of us can see. And I guess I maybe I weirdly believe in that. But um, I just love this. It's um, a story of, I guess I would kind of say lost souls. Um, they all end up in this apartment complex together in a beachy town in the Southeast United States. I'm not really sure what state, I can't remember. Um, and it's, they're all orphans, but ultimately what the story is about is these people are all holding on to somebody they love who has passed and struggling to move on with their lives until they can let go of these people. Cover immediately makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and it's so great. And there's a whole theme in this book about witches balls, which are these glass balls with sort of like um, water drops of glass on the inside. And the story behind a witch's ball is that um, they collect, if you have ghosts, where you live, they collect the ghosts. So you know, you know I finished this book and I went to Etsy and I ordered it. myself witches balls. So anyway, a great Christmas gift would be this book with the witches ball for everybody. Yeah. But anyway, I love this book. Um, I have a couple similar inspired by Sarah Addison Allen on my list. And she actually, this was a long delay in her publishing. Um, she talks, I believe, in the acknowledgments that um, I think it was her mom passed. And so some of that was sort of woven into this book and that caused the delay. Um, and it was good for me that she's back because I wasn't sure if it was a situation where she had quit writing or nobody was picking up her next books and uh, it was worth the wait. Yeah. Recommend it. Well, we read a lot. We did. Up. We have some good ones. I got a list. Yeah. I well, me too. I have a list that I'll just shop for at, at the office. <laughs> yeah. yeah you'll, have 
Yeah, I'll, I'll put a box together and ship some off to you. I am proud of us. The la last video, we were like, what are we going to talk about? We didn't have a lot. I know. But, well, we hope this was helpful. We can always take good recommendations for what to read next. And as Jessica mentioned a couple of times, we've got holidays coming up. So mark down any of these that you thought would be a good fit. Let us know what you're gifting this year. We always want to hear it. And we'll probably do another video on what we're gifting later on. But yeah, I think we should do a gifting video. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next time. Bye.